Hello guys, let's talk about the relative strengths of intermolecular interactions. Here we have this really handy table which contains different types of compounds. We start with nonpolar covalent compounds. We already know that the only type of interaction in these compounds is the London dispersion forces, which is going to cause a relatively weak intermolecular interaction and low boiling and melting points. Now, if we move on to polar covalent compounds without HF, HO, and HN bonds, so hydrogen bonding, we are also going to add on top of the London dispersion forces dipole-dipole interactions, which are going to give stronger intermolecular interactions and higher boiling and melting points. Now, if we move on to polar covalent compounds, which have HF, HO, and NH bonds, we are going to add hydrogen bonding to our previous list. And here we are going to get the strongest intermolecular attractions in case of dipole-dipole attractions and higher boiling points and melting points. Now, a fourth type of compound that we have to look at are ionic compounds. So in those cases, we are still going to have London dispersion forces, but because we are talking about different ions like sodium chloride, which contains Na plus and Cl minus ions, we are going to have ion to ion attractions. And in that case, we are going to have the strongest intermolecular interactions and the highest melting and boiling points. Just think about table salt. Did you ever see table salt melt? Well, I never did, right? So in short, to summarize, London dispersion forces are going to be the weakest, then dipole-dipole interactions, then hydrogen bonding, where we have age F, H, O, and H, N bonds, so hydrogen just wants to have fun, right? And then ion, ion attractions. Now, let's do some practice questions. First of all, let's arrange the following in order of increasing boiling point. Now, to answer this question, first, let's figure out what type of intermolecular interactions do we have in all these compounds. Well, we know that London dispersion forces exist in all cases, so I'm going to add London dispersion forces under each of these compounds, LDF. Okay, now let's look at CH3Cl. So the first compound right here. If I draw out its structure, it's going to look like this. So we are going to have bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms and carbon and chlorine atoms. Are any of these bonds polar? Yes, so actually the bond between the carbon and the chlorine atom is considered polar, so we are also going to have dipole-dipole interactions in case of this compound. Do we have hydrogen bonding? Do we have fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen bonded to hydrogen in this molecule? No, we don't. So these are all the intermolecular attractions in CH3Cl. How about sodium bromide, NaBr? So we are going to have Na plus and Br minus ions in there, right? Since we have ions, we are going to have ion to ion interactions. Is there dipole-dipole interaction? Is there hydrogen bonding? No, none of those. So only London dispersion forces and ion-to-ion -ion interactions in sodium bromide. Now, the next one is CH3OH, which is actually methanol. If I draw out a structure, the carbon is going to be my central atom. I'm going to have three hydrogen atoms connected to it, and then an oxygen atom connected to a hydrogen atom. Okay, do we have any polar bonds in there? We do, right? So if we do have polar bonds in there, and we are going to have dipole-to-dipole -dipole interactions if we have two molecules next to each other, right? Now, do we have hydrogen bonding? Oh, yes. So this OH bond will give us hydrogen bonding, right? So we are going to have H bonding also, all right, is there any other interaction? Do we have ion to ion attraction? No, because there are no ions involved. Okay, let's move to chlorine, which is Cl2. 
So we are going to have one bond between two chlorine atoms. Is there a dipole-dipole interaction if I draw out another Cl2 molecule next to it? No, there won't be any, right? Because Cl2 is a non-polar covalent compound, so we will have only London dispersion forces. All right, so here we can actually come up with the increasing order of boiling point. So which of these compounds will have the lowest boiling point? Well, the one that only has London dispersion forces between the different molecules. So Cl2 will have the lowest boiling point. Then I have to find the species that have dipole-dipole interactions as their strongest interactions, and that is C. H3Cl, and then I have to look for the species that has hydrogen bonding in it, and that is methanol or CH3OH, and then I have to look for the species that has ion to ion attraction in it, which is sodium bromide, so NABR. So this is the order of boiling points for these four species. I hope this makes sense. Let's do some more practice questions. So which of these compounds has a higher boiling point? And we have a couple of pairs that we have to compare. So the first one is HF and HBr. First of all, do we have London dispersion forces in both cases? Yes, we do, right? It's because they exist in every single molecule. Now, do we have dipole-dipole interactions between both molecules? Yes, we do, right? Because both the HBr and HF bonds are polar. Now, the question is, do we have hydrogen bonding in one of these? We do, right? Because we need to have an HF, HO, or HN bond for hydrogen bonding to appear, right? And in hydrofluoric acid, we actually have hydrogen bonding. So hydrofluoric acid is going to have a higher boiling point compared to HBr. Now, the second one here, we have HBr again compared to sodium bromide. What do you think? Which one will have the higher boiling point? Well, I would choose sodium bromide right away because in this case we have ion to ion attractions, okay? And when you have that, you are going to see the highest boiling point. Now here in the third part, we have two long hydrocarbons, okay? Two long compounds. So in the first one, we have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms and a bunch of hydrogen atoms. So we actually have here C5H12. Now, what do we have in the second compound? One, two, three, four carbon atoms. So this is going to be actually C4H10. So these are called alkanes, and you are going to learn more about them in organic chemistry. But do we have London dispersion forces in both molecules? We do, right? Do we have dipole-dipole interactions? No, we don't, because we only have carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bonds. So now how do I decide if both only have London dispersion forces, which one is going to have the higher boiling point? Well, it depends on the mass. So the heavier molecules are going to exhibit stronger London dispersion forces. So the longer chain molecule, in this case C5H12, is going to have a higher boiling point compared to the shorter chain C4H10. Okay, let's look at one more pair. So here we have neopentane, which is C5H12, and n-pentane, which is also C5H12. Now, how do I decide between these two molecules that have very, very similar bonds that are non-polar covalent bonds, which one will have the higher boiling point? Well, it depends on the shape of the molecule. So if you look at neopentane, it has this kind of round shape, right? So when you have two neopentane molecules, they would look like this next to each other. What if you draw two n-pentane molecules next to each other? They are linear, right? So they would look like this. 
Where do you think will you have higher London dispersion forces? In case of N pentane, right? Why? Because there is just bigger overlap between the different molecules and there is just more chance for the dispersion to occur, okay? So you are going to actually have stronger London dispersion forces in case of N pentane compared to neopentane, even though they have the same mass and they have very similar nonpolar covalent bonds, okay? I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.